What is going on, everyone? Welcome to the Digital Cipher Podcast. We are here. It is Saturday, 10 a.m. Eastern Standard Time with my homies, uh, Dio Zales and the Don CJG. What's going on, everyone? Hello. Hello, indeed. It's been a... Uh, <laughs> It's been a good old weekend, huh? Somewhat for you, you know. Yeah. Oh, it's uh, I'm 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 like a child on Christmas morning right now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you guys have that Halo Infinite right now. Uh huh. Yep. Uh, and now we'll also like to thank everyone who has subscribed to the podcast on the uh, on YouTube. If you haven't done so, uh, definitely feel free to subscribe um, or follow us, as they would say on Twitch. And just to get to know, stay in the know with uh, with what's going on. Um, yeah, Halo Infinite has been released on Thursday, and um, but officially playable on Friday. <laughs> that was a whole done. <laughs> yeah. That was a whole scenario. Done. What happened? <laughs> oh man, right. So um, they set out a kind of general kind of timeline of when it was going to be available and it said afternoon on Thursday mm -hmm. uh, Pacific time which is cool um, but I think a lot of people were kind of being patient I didn't know when the afternoon was so mm -hmm. everyone kind of started refreshing the Halo Waypoint page <laughs> and Halo Waypoint got trending on Twitter and uh, Waypoint crashed <laughs> oh, wow. Like you couldn't even load the website, couldn't sign in, anything that broke. You know, they had to rebuild the flight servers <laughs> as well because it just everything just got overwhelmed. Um, so it kind of got delayed about four or five hours. Ended up, I don't know what time it released uh, in the US. I, I was asleep, <laughs> so I went. I, I went to sleep on Thursday at midnight, uh, and it wasn't available. So the was still broke. I woke up at Friday at 5 30. Servers were fixed. Um, but if you're an Xbox member, the way you access it was through the, um, the Insider Hub. Right. And uh, that was broken <laughs> as well. Because <laughs> everyone was trying to jump in the Insider Hub and download it. So that broke too. Um, <laughs> so that was broken for about another six yeah. hours as well. <laughs> so. Pretty much every Xbox and Halo related server just went down. It was insane. Um, but, you know, I got home eventually. I managed to get my download. Nice. And I've been playing. Yep, yep. Yeah. Uh, joined in with the with the Don CJG crew. Blue? Crew. Yeah. yeah. It was fun. You know, um, kind of kind of reminded me of uh, playing Halo 3 a little bit. Like, just, just mm -hmm. the the nostalgic feel of of a four v four, you know, um, you know, gameplay, if you will, uh, but, PvP. It had that that vibe with just higher graphics. It, to me, again, now um, in the beginning, uh, I must confess that I was a boss amongst killing bots. Only realizing <laughs> afterwards that I was killing bots and not real people. Yeah, after we told you. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, he's like, man, I am the ish right now. You know what I'm saying? Like, let's go, you know? And then, um, and then it's like, you know, Don CD is uh, chuckling with, uh, with Glink. He's like, yeah, he doesn't know, doesn't he? Like, no, he doesn't know. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I did find it weird that every time I kill somebody, they had 343 in the front of their game tags. But then I was like, yeah, you know, you know it might be some, you know, some Halo you fans. Just got the employees, really, bro. Yeah. yeah. I mean, no, just, you know, Halo fans, you know, they, 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 oh, they you know, they just enjoy playing the game. You know, what I'm saying they enjoy the um the studio, whatever. So I'm thinking, yeah, they like they're fan fans. They're like so much fans <laughs> that they would name themselves behind 343. Yeah, yeah, that's me wishing, you know, whatever. But uh, yeah, man, yeah. So uh, they they you know they're pretty well. I think you know Don could tell a better story, but you know. This one was without Dawn. They they released a new map. Was it today? Compared to yesterday? Um, they released that about midnight for me. Okay. Uh, 
So I don't, I don't spend, I don't know, 6 o'clock your time maybe? 5, o five o'clock, I believe, yeah. Five oh, yeah, 5 or 6. Yeah. It was shortly after you left. Um, to be fair. Okay. About an hour after. So then what what that means to me is like when i after i stopped playing with you know playing in the, on the team with you guys i you know woke up this morning and did this and i was like trash you know complete trash yeah they they increased the um in difficulty as well <laughs> uh, that's what i'm saying they were, they were, <laughs> yeah you know they were um they were doing things i've never seen a bot yeah, yeah. do like this is like true ai testing they were like teabagging and everything mm -hmm. not, not the oh yeah the, 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 the bots are really good though I haven't. Yeah, I haven't there, there, there is footage. Oh, <laughs> there is footage. Yo, I, I've seen it. I've seen it. You know, somebody's gonna do a meme uh, on a on a on a on a bot teabagging, right? Say so you're like, this is you. Oh yeah, like <laughs> I, I've seen. Yeah, <laughs> I've seen videos of like bots like jumping behind people and meleeing them. And, like, it's really impressive what they do. Mm -hmm. so, like if you didn't know, like like Ivanic said, you didn't know. Like you, they come off as players at times. Um, you know, yeah, you do see a bit, you know, weird bot behavior here and there. Uh, they might just stand around for a little bit. Yeah. Um, but as they as they've increased the difficulty now, um, these ones are very, uh, very more aggressive. You know, <laughs> they're, yeah. they're a bit harder. I can't lie. Yeah. Um, I I, you know, I, uh, yeah. I thought it was me playing, but with some randoms, it's like, man, where's Don? I need Don in this party. <laughs> <laughs> that, that should be um Sunday night sometime. What's that? So, and uh, they'll add actual four v four with players. Gotcha, gotcha. So, I think um, tonight they'll increase the difficulty again with a new map. And oh, then... gosh. again? Yep. Right. Yes, yeah, so we're doing like stretch goals. So I think uh, we hit one point two million kills, uh -huh. and that's when they added the new map and they increased the difficulty. Ah, uh, so, they increased... so so yeah. they're, they're too easy, you know? You know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, we, yeah, so they're getting to test each difficulty and how it works and whatnot. It's good. Gotcha. 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 We need, we need, we need um, DL Zales up in here. You know, BR4. That's yeah, not like they're trying to make it into Dark Souls. <laughs> 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 no, there, wait, there's no sneaking around. What are you talking about? <laughs> there's no. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? There's no dodge. <laughs> well, well, no, there's no dodge. I think the other one, what was it? Halo, was it Halo 5 or Halo 4 that had the, uh, the booster on your back? About five. Yeah. I mean, four had it as well, but it wasn't the same. Yeah. But um, apparently, you know, while we're enjoying the gameplay, we had people, you know, in the behind the scenes, data mining the poor game. Oh, mm -hmm. uh, yeah. <clears throat> you know, and, yep. um, you know, re revealing some story beats. Yeah, I have muted everything on Twitter. Like, any kind of keyword <laughs> leak. <laughs> Data mine anything to Halo Halo Infinite like muted. <laughs> I'm not gonna see it. Uh, apparently, um, it, yeah, it has been on Twitter and YouTube, and uh, yeah, the guys at uh, 343 basically said, you know, they, they issued a warning saying, hey, mm -hmm. you may see some um, spoiler like campaign spoilers coming from you know other players. They are legit, um, but he also. The guy also stated that um, they're issuing some, uh, was it DMCA? Takedowns, or? yeah. Takedown notices um, um, and strikes. Um, yep. Industry specific strikes, not just like Halo, like industry specific strikes because you're, you're, you're participating in like an alpha beta like environment. So it's kind of like, you know, I, I kind of imagine it to be, you know, you're like an actor, right? And you tell a director, you know, suck it, and you move on. And a director, <laughs> you, you know, and a di you know, director's like, all right, I see how this is. And then he tells all his other directors, you know, in the industry, you know, don't hire this one person. Like that's how I see this strike mm -hmm. happening. You know, because we're dealing with 343. This is a first party through Microsoft. You know, so it's like a giant in the game industry, one of the yeah. giants in the industry. So, you know, you don't want to mess with, you know, you you can mess with indies, you know, but. I mean, not that I would want that to happen, but you know, you just have to look out. <laughs> so, um, yeah, you can probably get away with smaller studios. Someone like this is, uh, you know, yeah, they're not gonna play lightly with it. Yeah, no. yeah. Um, I know Don, not that Don, Deal. You you've seen it, but uh, uh, Don C J G, have you seen the Unreal uh, tech demo? 
I've seen parts of it. I haven't seen like, the full um, thing about it. But I filmed like, I saw a lot of screenshots and um, mm. descriptions. It was quite, quite nice, man. Quite nice. It was impressive yeah. what they've been able to do mm -hmm. with the time they've been using it, you know? Um, did you see the one for PlayStation 5 tech demo? Is that in one in the desert? Yeah, the no, the one with yeah. the girl, the girl, you know, doing all these high jumps and stuff. And yes, 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 yes. So, I'm going somewhere with this. So okay. the tech, the tech demo for PlayStation Five was done by Unreal themselves, right? And then okay. the one that was seen was done by the Coalition. Yep. That speaks numbers to me. Oh yeah, you know because um, it just to me just sounds like PlayStation or uh, play, yeah PlayStation as a as a as a company paid Unreal to say hey say these things and and have it on our PlayStation as a as a as a marketing thing you yeah know? and then here comes Xbox or the Xbox Game Studios the Coalition be like okay. <laughs> We see how this is going. We're going to create our own joint. And uh, we're going to blur. Now, here's the thing. Uh, I'm not sure what the tech demo was for the PlayStation 5, what the resolution was. But the one for the Xbox, I wasn't wasn't that? It was either 1080p or 720, running at 60 frames. Do you know? Mm, I don't know off the top of my head. Okay, I I think it, I think they were trying to run it on the Xbox One. Was that the case? I believe they were they were trying to show cross generational gameplay while running the um the Unreal Engine Five tech demo. I could be wrong. I might be spitting fire, but it just seems that you know the work that's coming out of Xbox is just being oh, okay. They just did something else, but then. You know, Unreal put something on PlayStation Five, and it's kind of like the world goes out with it. You know what I mean? So I was just—it just came up. It just something to me when you see the underdogs really put their best foot forward, right? Kind of like when you look at um, what's the name of that co other company? Is it Exile? No, um, the one where it's Senua's Sacrifice. Oh, um, Ninja Fury. Yeah, yeah, and then the the Unreal Engine five test they did. It was just mm -hmm. the stairs. <laughs> yeah, it was just, it <laughs> yeah, it's crazy. What a thing. Yeah, the sink. You know, yeah, saying, but I mean, all you know, they said it was all done within Unreal Engine five as well. And that joint, I thought that joint was a real building. So you know, they had to employ some form of architectural uh, means, right? Not just basic. Um, you know, game development, you know, tactics, but they have architectural um, uh, solutions within the Unreal Engine um, pipeline. So to see that, I was like, yo, that is nonsense. But anyways, we'll see because Hell, um, Hellblade 2 has got to come out and then um, their, their project. Yeah, it's going to be a while, but I'm ready for it. What? It's not, um, was it 2022, right? Hopefully. No, they only started no. development. For yeah, I don't think for so. uh, Senua Sacrifice, I mean, um, nah, Hellblade Two. Yep, I would imagine like 2024 maybe. Damn. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they released a documentary like just after E3, and Damn. it was just like, yeah, they've only just really started. <laughs> gotcha. So, kind of remind me of uh, the Outer Worlds too. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. And yeah, that pretty, video. Much, pretty much. Yeah, that joint was that joint was. It was cool though. Every time I think about E3, I think about that one reveal. You know. You know, mm -hmm. the, you know, the devs haven't even scratched the surface. Oh, yeah. Models have not yeah. been created. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's it a perfect way to say, look, it's on the way, but uh, yeah, this is going to be a while. The story is yeah. not even done. <laughs> you know, it was pretty cool, man. That's, 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 that's quirky. I like that. That was pretty nice. Um, yeah, settings go like that. So, uh, but um, Dio, what did you think about the... The Unreal Engine Five Tech Demo. What what came to your thoughts when you when you saw that? I thought it was very impressive because I think it's it's cool for people who own a Series X right now, right? And they feel like, why do I have a Series X when 
a lot of these games are games I can play on my, you know, on my my one still. But it like it like lets you see what's coming, right? Like how much better everything's gonna get. Mm -hmm. And I think that's like the biggest thing I took away from that because right now, I mean, there are a few reasons to have a Series X or or a PS5, but they're mm -hmm. they're very few, right? Yeah. But when you see stuff like that, it, it definitely helps hype you up, and you know, especially when <laughs> you see something like that, and you have friends who are like, "Man, I don't even have a Series X or a Series S or a PS5," you know, like they like they're all down about and disappointed. So you're like you're ready now, you know, you're just waiting for it to drop at that point. And you know the the weirdest thing. So I'm gonna hit this in two points. You make a good compelling point, my friend, um, because. It's definitely a system seller the way how they, um, they, you know, they announce, you know, the, the, you know, the, the UE5 tech demo. The thing mm -hmm. that, that is really interesting though, is the lack of understanding on the X cloud, um, and how that's going to also play a part for last gen. Um, oh, yeah. because I mean, a lot of the games that are coming out that are multiplayer, well, mul well not multiplayer, um, cross-platform or mm -hmm. yeah, cross-platform is you see available on the Xbox Series X and S, right? Uh, but backwards compatible for PlayStation 5. You're playing on a PlayStation 4 version of the game. Um, yeah. A lot of those are going on and it's it's almost crazy. I, I feel bad for him. You know, <laughs> I know some, I know some of y'all don't, uh, cause it's, um, cause when you look at it, every time somebody says, Oh, we're, we're upgrading the game to 4k 60 with new textures and stuff like that. And then you see on PS five, it's kind of like, you know, PlayStation four, um, backwards compatible. It's kind of like, so when are we going to step up? Like what's going on? And I think that's, mm -hmm. that's with the VRR, right? The very, um, refresh rate yeah that's with the uh, the 60 frames and 4k I'm, I'm assuming or is it something different I'm I haven't dug into it pretty deep but I'm trying to figure out like what's going on with the the backwards compatibility on a next gen like what does it always have to be backwards compatible well I mean that's definitely in, in my opinion it's it's good you know customer service right like you're giving your customer the best value mm -hmm. where if they can't afford to go up you know, a notch yet, but you're still keeping them in the game. You know what I mean? And I think yeah. that's really very, very consumer friendly. And I think that's something that the PC has an, has had an advantage of for a long time mm -hmm. compared to console players. Yeah. And we're definitely seeing it play out more now. Because it's you happening know, with Psychonauts too, actually. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. You know, um, and people are crying about it, but at the same time, you know, I mean, it's an Xbox Game Studio at this point. They technically don't have to do what they what they're yeah. doing right now. You know what I mean? Yeah, like, they just they just got contracted to make the game on PlayStation Four, right? <laughs> yeah, I mean. So. Yeah, I, I mean, I think it's a case of best place to play is Xbox, right? <laughs> In yeah. some degree, yeah, if you want a better experience, you know what to play it. Yeah, I just I, I you know I just like you know on 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 YouTube. We have good, you know, Zacher and Cole Eastwood and, you know, the Real Deal Game Podcast and Real Deal Xbox Podcast. You know, they they speak avidly about Xbox, but they also call BS when Microsoft is not doing their job. And, you know, I really wish that those guys over at the PlayStation side would do the same thing. You know what I'm saying? I mean, because mm -hmm. I'm listening to I was listening to this podcast and they were talking about what's you know what's going on especially with the ps5 storage um update and they're like completely confused on why it couldn't just be like how the xbox has it you know what i'm saying where you just plug it in and play you know um console players are not pc gamers i mean not not all console players are i wouldn't know how to do it you kidding me yeah. Like if my parents did, like if I was a kid and my parents would be like, I don't know what to do. <laughs> well, you have to ask for a screwdriver, <laughs> right? Yeah, and even I mean, then, like if you can't do it and your parents don't know, and you gotta heat sink stuff, and it's ah. Oh, that's well. We will get into that, but the thing, the thing yeah. is, is like, mm -hmm. you know, it's um, it's a situation where 
you're you're asking your consumer to potentially I, I, I don't know if this is the word but um the warranty your console right uh, and the, yeah yeah you sure. know i mean it's it's a slot it's there it's in the open area right so i'm sure they won't you know rip that piece of paper that says you you void warranty when you take this paper off but you don't know because you know and i'm, I'm speaking generally because it, it would be the same thing with the xbox um where yeah. someone some kid or someone who's not you know computer savvy goes and buys a uh m.2 right and he they're just unscrewing the whole thing it's like you know the all the plastic is gone the covering is gone mm-hmm. you're seeing the motherboard the whole yeah thing. but this, this is it right i think like you're saying it's if you're not a tech savvy guy it's not exactly obvious what you have yeah. to do to get this in okay but if i'm comparing it to the xbox i look at the console there's this is you know it's the slot you know that's where i put it in <laughs> you know it's a pretty self-explanatory you know some uh, guys some guys would take would take it the, to, to the next level and actually sit down with their playstation 5 and a screwdriver and stare at youtube while other guys yep. myself included would just take the whole thing apart and look for the m.2 you oh, know what for i mean sure. i mean remember the red ring of death i remember plenty of people like trying to I mean, figure out ways put it in to, like, the freezer bro themselves. <laughs> oh wow! You're wrapping it now. Last time I put anything <laughs> in the freezer was a Nintendo cartridge. <laughs> oh, no way! <laughs> <laughs> yeah, dude, that was the thing back in the day. You either you either um you blow into the cartridge or you put it into the yeah. freezer, or you shift it left and right and and you slam it in. You know, whatever. <laughs> it's you know it's getting very you know I know the, the language is getting very provocative on a Nintendo console, but you know if you <laughs> if you existed ar- around those times. You know, you did anything possible to make that NES work, especially yeah. for Mario Three. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, I, I, I mean, I just, you, you know, the gamers who on a PlayStation needs to put their their foot forward, you know, apply that energy back to those to Sony and be like, look, y'all gotta do this, or we're we're sending our PlayStations back, because you're you're talking about buying an M.2, right? Yeah. Um, one terabyte is like how much? One fifty to one ninety nine or something like that. Mm-hmm. Um, which is cheaper, cheaper than the Xbox One, but you still gotta apply technical skill and ability. And if, you know, God forbid you f- you fry the M dot two, you know, um, the heatsink is like an extra chunk of change. It's not a hundred dollars, but probably anywhere between fifteen to like thirty bucks that you got to apply paste to and that's not toothpaste people <laughs> <laughs> it's not it's not hot glue it's not super glue it's uh oh, it's, it's, it's oh, thermal no. paste <laughs> i can imagine the people doing it <laughs> <laughs> thermal paste <laughs> it hurts <laughs> <laughs> i've seen yo <laughs> There was this one. I'm sure you saw this one. It was a meme, right? <laughs> the guy is trying to the guy is trying to clean his his uh, CPU, and he's scraping off. <laughs> oh, oh my god, dude! Oh. He, he's he's scraping off the pins that the that the the CPU oh. needs to sit on. <laughs> no, I was like, yo, you gotta be like, this gotta be like somebody who knows PCs, but this is like a PC that's been done. Like, there's nothing you can do with the motherboard anymore. You know what I'm saying? It, it, you know, cause yeah. like, that was real. And uh, I think there was another one where a dude was, um, he was putting, applying paste, and he basically pasted the whole CPU. You're supposed to put a dot on the CPU, but he pasted the whole thing. And then he smushed yeah. it in and paste was e- <laughs> oozing out the sides. Yeah. And I was like, oh. damn, bro. Like, you know, you know, having to clean that up, bro. Like, so Im- I can imagine somebody, let's say they got the paste right, right? They got the thermal paste. And then they paste the living daylights out of that M.2. <laughs> You know, <laughs> God forbid, God forbid they put it on the wrong side of the M.2. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, yo, this is oh, crazy. God. Yeah, this is this is just a disaster, man. Like, I think, and they, they, I think they put out a guide, like PlayStation put a guide, but this is not a guide situation. This is like, no. they, it should have been something where 
unfortunately because they already have it in place you know they have the appropriate product they have the appropriate thermal um um what is it called um heat sink and thermal paste like they actually show you what you need to buy and then they have the video like that would have been so consumer friendly at this point in time not a pdf <laughs> yeah true yeah like, really i mean i you know honestly because of like last gen's failure i would say i would you know if xbox didn't care i would have said that would have been an xbox move like here's a pdf here you go we failed so you know for those who still believe in us here you go but that's not the case we're better <laughs> you're better at this point so like sony as a leading console leading in the console market this is below par i i got i have to call it out like this is below par and um you know yeah i mean the fact that it's only in beta now and we're what nine months after launch almost yeah it's, but it's, come on man. imagine pc players going to playstation folks and saying this is how you do it <laughs> or, <laughs> you know right, that? yeah you know what i'm saying or, like or, or equivalent that like hey look you're on console you want to expand your storage in the back done exactly you know i mean just, just to know like but who wants to hear that have been around since the 360 days bro but who wants to hear that who wants to hear that the best way to um input a a expansion slot is to go to an xbox series x or s and just put in a slot you know like who's you know the majority of the people already purchased playstation 5s that was their yeah. mistake in the front huh you know what i'm saying and and they've been waiting for an answer you know honestly in my opinion it would have been it would have been perfect if they just made a brick that goes into the slot <laughs> and call it a day you know what i'm saying Good. and then you know um because we there are m.2 enclosures that you can you can just slot an m.2 into and then put it and then put it into that slot you know just a brick boom is in there you know if you if you got a a, a higher m.2 like a two uh two terabyte you put two two sorry i'm saying this weird you put two two terabytes into the brick and then you put it into your playstation that would have made sense and it probably puts you in a better position than xbox because now you've you've become customizable you know what i mean yeah but it's um i don't know what game they're playing but it's it's not consumer friendly in my opinion no i, I think mean, it's lack of foresight man why can't it just be easy like the PlayStation 1 and 2, right? Like when you just put the memory card right in the front right. and just slid it in. It's like they've done, they've done this before, you know what I mean? Yeah. I mean, I, I miss those days. It was nice and easy. I remember when like your Dreamcast tried to make it complicated, mm -hmm. well, complicated, quote unquote, by putting it in the controller, you know, and the city for Nintendo 64, but I mean, even that was easier. Yeah, you know what was, I mean? That was pretty cool. And and with the Dreamcast, they had like a, a the game on the actual yep. joint too. Yep. So that's pretty cool. That was innovative, you know. Um, yeah. So you don't have to sure. like take the console out, you know, your entertainment center and put something, um, put that extension pack in. So that was pretty cool. But um, when you look at the PlayStation Five, like the only thing you can do is get an external with high, like a high-speed external um, hard drive and plug it into the front, you know, USB uh, 3.0, and call it a day at that point. Because technically. You know who is going to actually open their on um, their PlayStation? I mean, let's be real about it. Yeah. What technical person is going to open like you know un unslide those those uh those panels for the PlayStation, right? And open up that that um that area that has the M.2, and feel comfortable putting an F um that uh that uh ex that M.2 expansion slot like. I can see this as a business model where now your um, mom and pop stores are going to say, hey, we can do this for you for like a hundred dollars. Right. <laughs> or Best Buy, you know what I'm saying? Or yeah, that's the, like the geek squad, right? <laughs> yeah. You know, like it just feels weird. You know what I'm saying? I mean, so I know some other people are going to be like, yeah, man, that's their fault. They should handle it. But um, as a gamer, if that was me, I would I would feel so 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 salty right now um as salty yeah, especially as people mm -hmm. i guess especially for people who probably will have more than one right because we're, we're just thinking about the 
with just having one of those cards. But imagine someone who has like a bunch of them, right? Because they want to like, they're like crazy and they want to have. This is for my role playing games. This is for my sport games. This is for my. <laughs> you know what I mean? Wow. Oh, yeah. God. Imagine that guy having yeah. to switch them out every time. <laughs> oh, wow. <laughs> uh, you know what? That was side, side question. I always thought, is there a way to create like a gaming server? Meaning like a, a like you download, uh, <clears throat> like you, you have these um, external hard drives, you format them. Okay, let's just talk Xbox real quick. Sorry. You format all your hard drives to be, um, to how Xbox would read them, right? Because of course you can't plug that same hard drive into a PC and expect it to work. It's, it, it's not going to work that way. Um, so you format the, the external to your hard drive, to, um, to the Xbox, um, you know, readability wise. And then you plug it into a PC, let's say, you know, Linux or whatever. And then you just basically, you know, you know, access hundreds of thousands of games you already have in your library to a different server. Is that possible? Like, that'd be kind of cool though. You know, like how you have a music server at home and mm -hmm. you just, yeah, like for games, like, would, is that possible? Uh, I know that's a heavy one. <laughs> that's. <a> heavy one. <laughs> I mean, I mean, maybe for some technical loophole. But I feel like, a lot of like, like, is it worth it? I mean, yeah. it, I mean, because that's. A, I mean, to the guy who has a hard drive for every genre, right? Yeah. You know, he's gonna have a SATA drive. That's probably ten terabytes. You know, mm -hmm. you know, where is that gonna go? You know, when he plugs that out. You know what I'm saying? Like, is he gonna have a drive bay? You know what I'm saying? Like a drive bay, like five drive oh. bay of of, 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 <laughs> of SSDs plugged into the PlayStation Five and Xbox, and and say, you know what I'm saying? Like, I'm just saying. That's I'd that's, be very concerned. <laughs> we gotta we gotta find this guy. <laughs> I mean, they, they definitely exist, right? Like, oh, for sure. They collect all kinds of nonsense, so yeah. I wouldn't doubt it. You know, they'll have like some special like stickers on it and everything, because yeah, you know that's man. gonna come off. They got it all labeled and everything. Yeah, <laughs> I tell you, if Xbox does that, it's done. Like, a, a PC guy can buy an Xbox, right, and download all of his games to his gaming server. That's just a a PC on standby, and you know what I'm saying, to feed the Xbox games without having to download anymore. You know what I'm saying? Like, mm -hmm. you have 353 games, and you download all, all of those to your PC. You know, the only the only caveat is you have to, you can only play it on your, your Xbox, but you're basically streaming from the PC to your Xbox, pretty much. You know what I'm saying? Instead of having to, you I know, can't like, do it the other way. So there's yeah. the reverse, right? Right, it's basically the reverse, yeah. I mean, but, I'm sure it could happen, I guess. Yeah. I'm just saying, man. I mean, make it happen, Xbox. PlayStation needs oh, it. Jesus, but, yeah, well, I guess the it. thing is, through the technical workload, is it worth it? <laughs> it depends. <laughs> Again, it depends. Um, For collectors, it is. Yeah, because yeah, I guess. if, let's say, okay, let's be, let's be real, Don. Have you gone back into your library and see a game missing? Missing? No. Missing. Because missing. It's, it's no longer supported on the console of choice. But it's backwards compatible. No. Um, my point exactly would be like uh, Marvel Ultimate Alliance. The first yeah. One. Exactly. Like something like that. Um, you know, a lot of people they can't really buy um they can't buy split second. Well, they could buy split second, but it's not it's not available as a downloadable game, right? It was, yeah. but it's not. So w if you had that game on that PC, it will be playable on your Xbox Series X right now. Mm. You know what I'm saying? Um, the very first Call of Duty. You know what I'm saying? That's like the dawn of 360, you know, mm -hmm. time frame. You know, um, instead of having to search for it, you just... You know, it's on your server. And just play. Anyways, it doesn't matter. Any, I was just wondering about the <laughs> possibility. Um, but another thing that has come across is, um, has there been any Xbox games that have been um, delayed? The, we, we've been pretty solid on those dates, right? 
We, we haven't I mean, pushed back anything yet, I'm assuming. No, I not mean, by any was, right? <laughs> For an original date. Which one was What do you mean, like an infinite? I don't know what you're talking about. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, that was last year, yeah. 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 Well, but, I mean, it's expected. As of, like, recently? Holiday. Yeah, as of no. recently, yeah. yeah. Um, everything is set to come out as, as due. Um, because I want to make sure I'm clear that um, I find it interesting that the Horizon Forbidden West is delayed, and I'm... That was a very highly anticipated game. Like that mm -hmm. game got so much press when it got released, you know, um, trailer-wise. That you know, I'm sure pre-orders were flying, and now to see it go 2022, that's um, that's a little heartbreaking. Um, yeah, it wasn't it God of War when it got delayed like a couple weeks ago as well. Now Horizon. Yeah. Yeah, that's. Well, that's I mean. Bad. Mm -hmm. If I was waiting for that, I would rather it get delayed and it launched like Cyberpunk. <laughs> True. True. <laughs> so, I don't really yeah. see anything wrong with that unless, like, like if they said something crazy, like, oh, we're delaying this back like two or three years because <laughs> we're just trying to work on it now. You don't know what I mean? Remind me, though, because that would be famous or something like that. Like, mm. There's a lot of companies that can claim that <laughs> now. You yeah. know, like, that was the problem with Anthem. That was the problem uh, with Warcraft 3 Reforged. Mm -hmm. That finally came out the truth with that. Yeah. Um, it's like every company is just guilty of it pretty much at this point. I find it um, a little bit, I find it interesting though. Um, and I'm shifting gears here. Uh, Dancy's AG, have you... Hello. Have you purchased the Steam Deck yet? No. Are you ready to jump in? No, I'm not gonna get one. <laughs> You're not what? Yeah. He's not getting one. <laughs> what? <laughs> Game Pass on no, the go while you're riding it. the while you're running the train, hitting the cab? Nah. Uh, nah. <laughs> but you can do that on his phone also though. Yeah, it's an active on phone. But it doesn't. He's like, it's like Steam, I'd have to buy a bunch of games. I don't wanna have to buy a bunch of games. You don't really? Mm, okay. So it was nah. um a little bit of a discussion, you know, IGN had their their um their talks. And I find I find it interesting and I find it pretty cool that a lot of their innovation led to the creation of the Steam Deck. Um, Is that the interview with uh, Gabe Newell? Yes. Okay, I didn't watch that yet. Yes. Um, you know, the, you know, what's his name? The uh, Xbox Unlock host. Ryan McCaffrey. Yeah. Man, he was really trying, bro. But like, hot they, takes McCaffrey. That guy. Yeah, man. Um, <laughs> But he really came through, um, Gabe really came through, and it wasn't really PR. It was more like, yo, this is our passion project, you know. We first started yeah. thinking about, when I say we, meaning they, when they were talking, they said that they were thinking about um, um, approaching studios, you know, for development and realized that as they were getting into the, the actual development of the Steam Deck, how much more it would have been profitable as a piece of hardware to be open and not just secluded to you know a platform of you know just like like a proprietary platform like steam right mm -hmm. um but um i was hoping i can get something out of don cjg maybe he had you know got got no. look into it man you suck no i will uh <laughs> i can assure you i will not be purchasing a steam deck anytime you suck bro. <laughs> <laughs> I just don't either. You know what I mean? Yeah, I got you. I, got like, you. I think it's cool. I think it's a cool idea. Because um, it even does VR. Good. Yeah, I don't, I don't care about VR. <laughs> you say that now until Halo goes VR and be like, "Where's my Steam Deck?" No, I, <laughs> I think VR is just a gimmick at this point. You got. It. You say what? Is what? Gimmick. 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 I don't think yeah. so. I think I think it's setting the stage for future handhelds like itself because i think you know people will more hey handhelds are dead right if it's not nintendo switch it's basically handhelds are dead um that's how it came across to me because nobody else was doing anything um yeah. sony kind of killed off the playstation video and psp or whatever so you know who else would do anything if sony couldn't do it and then here comes valve like really valve what really and then they mm. they showed it off 
it becomes something. And now, you know, I'm, I, I wouldn't I wouldn't put it past AMD, NVIDIA, Microsoft behind a veil thinking about, hmm, could we have done this? And how could we have done it better? You know what I'm saying? Like, and really, you know, making, because the, the number one thing on, on game pads is the, um, the dual sense, right? But with touch pads, like the steam deck, you know, I'm being able to play almost any game that is on PC and game pads. I mean, is the dual sense a necessity anymore? Like, should it be, you know, I, for the console, perhaps for the console, perhaps, you know, um, but I, I can see that fading away quickly because technology is just continuously moving forward. Yeah. Um, any thoughts on that? No, I'm just waiting for it to come out and <laughs> I'll be playing little games here and there with it. Like how I do on my switch. <laughs> like it's it's fun to have. It's pretty cool, but I know it's not going to be my main like source of entertainment. It's yeah, going to be like yeah. when I'm on my like you know trips and stuff like that. Cool, cool. Yeah. See, I don't take any trips. <laughs> 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 None of my journeys are long enough. You know what I mean? I just I don't I don't, I don't get any use out of it. So I like Game Pass in the cloud, but I don't get much use out of it. You know? Yes, you do. Mm -hmm. You down you download no. games from your phone. I mean, yeah, but I'm mean, the cloud streaming. Okay, that's one part. <laughs> yeah, I'm, 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 talking about, I'm talking about playing the games. I'm you should have said great that service, but I don't, I don't use that much. You know. Um, so Dio, you've been playing the Ascent. Oh yeah, it, how how is it? It's honestly a lot better than I thought. I, like, I'm not really into like what they call them, like uh, like twin stick shooters. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they, they can yeah. be kind of fun for a while, but usually for me, anyways, at least how I like, they always kind of feel kind of weird when you're shooting because like it, it always feels like you get overwhelmed uh -huh. and swarmed in in those type of games. But I think they have a good balance here. I mean, it, I've died in the game. It, it definitely gets difficult in certain parts because it is a role playing game, yeah. so you can definitely and it's very open world, so. <laughs> You could end up like literally going somewhere where you should not be. I've I've gone to places like as a level four character that are like level twenty, and I'm fighting these guys. It's it's cool though because you do have a fighting chance. You can try to kill them, and you'll get rewarded for it because they'll drop gear, and you can wear it even though it's a, a higher level piece of gear. So it it really rewards exploration and like pushing yourself. It's, you said, it's been you great said, so far. You said you can wear the gear. Does it have any um, limitation because of your no. your physical um, level is lower than the gear itself? Like, no, because like, mm -hmm. th the gear doesn't have like a restriction on it at all. Like, even though you're picking it up from a level 20 monster mm -hmm. and you're level 4, like there's no level to the actual gear itself. So it's it really rewards you like for like really pushing yourself. Because I've, I've killed monsters that are like you know 10 15 levels higher than me and mm. it's not to say that the, it's because the game is easy because they could easily one shot me if they get me <laughs> it's just, I'm, like evading it's, it you know like i'm dodging yeah. and taking cover and all those kind of things to make sure i don't get killed my daughters have seen me die plenty of times trying to fight monsters like 10 15 high, levels higher and they laugh at me you know i so, get one shot <laughs> so is that any weapon one shots you one bullet one kill or is it are you do you have no, some form of stunginess? No, it's, you 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 can be pretty tanky in the game. It's just that when you're fighting something that's like ten levels higher than you, for the most part, you know, they're going to be a lot stronger than you. So that's what well, that's what's going to one shot you. But enemies around your level, or even like a few levels higher than you, for the most part, are only going to kill you if you get swarmed or if you are getting too cocky. From what I've seen so far, and how I'm building my character also. And it has four player is, um, co op. Yeah, I haven't tried that yet, but um seems like it would be a pretty cool game to play in a group because you get a lot of augmentations like which are pretty much like skills or spells mm -hmm. so you would be able to kind of like run that like you know holy trinity like have one guy be like the tank let one guy be like the healer and then maybe like two dps wait there's a healer in there it, it's not that you start with a class but you could build your character to play a certain role mm. so if you find like 
the right like you know gun setup and the right skills and everything like that i could see you being like I, i'm not gonna say like a healer where it's like completely awesome like your standard mmo like like a priest or a paladin or something like that but you'll be able to heal enough and support your team good enough like like how most shooters are like you know how you had that support guy right. like a scout or something right. to like kind of bandage you up real quick so he stays you, on the you, outside you and that. he just throws like med caps at med, medical kits at you and uh, ammo and stuff like that well i haven't done it myself but i've seen different uh, mods out there i mean they even have mods where you can like call like a like an like a robotic like buddy to help you fight also mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. so there's all kinds of things you can play around with right what i've been playing around mostly is like the basic one that you get like you get this like punch it's like pretty much like falcon punch from like smash brothers oh, wow. and like you just yeah like you like demolish anything in your way and you put them on fire so it's pretty badass there's a lot of cool things to this game there's a lot of interesting character building to it that robot that you mentioned does that count as a as a as a player like a um, a playable slot or if you had if you had four man team that robot would be like the fifth man i haven't played with anybody else so i'm not really sure but i don't think it would take a character slot like how eso does with their um companion system right right that is interesting that's pretty cool do you foresee pvp being in the game from my understanding there's no pvp in the game as of yet but um i wouldn't necessarily want it in the game because then it would have to balance the game and this game definitely seems like it's balanced more in a way where they want you to get progressively stronger as the game goes on and get more badass. And I think, you know, not that they can't do it, but a lot of companies tend to mess up the PVE experience when they balance for PVP, especially when they don't go in with both in mind from the beginning. You know what I mean? Yeah. Well, that was the problem with Diablo 3. What was the, what will, will be yeah, a game that has the perfect balance of PvP, PvE that you've experienced so far? Um, I don't think I've ever, I, I won't say I've ever had like the perfect experience of a game, but I can say like in patches, so like World of Warcraft back in Miss and Pandaria time frame had very balanced PvP. Um, mm -hmm. That's the, that's the thing. Like a, a lot of the time, that's the thing. You can't really say a game has perfect balance in PvP. You like you got to reference like a patch almost or like a, a DLC because during that time frame it might have been just right. But then you it could also be very subjective. Like it felt very good because I played a warrior, but someone who played like a warlock or something might be like, "No, nah, it was garbage. I hated it." <laughs> yeah, like different dying. classes kind of thrived in different years of the game. Yeah, exactly. So it it, does, it definitely is a hard thing to do, especially. Like I said, like when you had that PvE element and you had that PvP struggling for the devs' time, yeah. it that's what really like deters from it. That's why too, usually you have a game that goes either way or is focused more on one than the other. Like I would imagine, Black Desert Online probably has better PvP uh, than current day WoW, hmm. balance wise, because it, it's a very PvP centric game. But PVE is garbage in that game because that's not their main focus. <laughs> that sucks. <laughs> yeah. So yeah. it's kind of like choose your poison, you know? So for someone that would be interested in the game, right? Do you have any recommendations so far since you've put some time in? I would definitely say not that you had to be careful on how you build your character, but how you, uh, you know, put your skill points actually makes a very significant difference like on my first playthrough i was uh putting it all into like dps like i was like literally yeah. putting it all into crit i was like, a literal glass cannon and it wasn't really bad but i got to a certain boss where i really needed way more defense than i had at the time so i just started over <laughs> and I regretted it because I found out later that you could reset your skill points. <laughs> oh no! And I was like, "Oh no, yeah. you can do that." So that that's another thing, you know. Like even though you should build yourself to have a good balance of two or whatever your playstyle is, like you could always reset it. At you know, there's a, there's a guy that helps you with that in the game that I wish I found earlier. <laughs> gotcha. Yeah. 
but the bosses are pretty cool. They're definitely challenging. They, they, for, I think for the average player, they're going to want to group up for the most part. Gotcha. Gotcha. Okay. So I got to definitely check that out. I have it downloaded as well. I just haven't jumped into it because that, that first guy, he kind of... He's like, I'm talking to an alien that looks like an alien from a movie called Aliens. And, uh, <laughs> <laughs> I want to play as one of those guys. They look pretty cool. It's they like are? the Hulk mixed with that alien. Yeah. It, it just took me by surprise because it, it's you by yourself the whole time. And then you, 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 you come up to this guy who's shot and he's talking to you. And he's like, okay, is there a mouth that's going to come out of that mouth that's going to try and like grab you and then kill you or something like that. yeah it was things that come I mean, let me just walk away because i'm because sometimes i think of that level where i think too much into a game that's technically not there so walking <laughs> away and then playing the game would then yeah you know help me out so um but uh don sees ag you've put in too many hours into halo way too many hours too many. <laughs> i mean like, you know how many hours <laughs> I mean, no, um, no, 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 forget the hours. What is your battle pass rank? Uh, I'm currently locked at about 14 or 15. 14 or 15. Yes, you only five uh, more until you're, until you're, you're. Yeah, you're well, this is, this is kind of what I wanted to talk about. Okay. <laughs> um, so I was doing a little reading on the first. And, you know, as, 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 I, was, as I was playing, um, so your battle pass in the flight is maxed at 20, right? So I'm about 14 or 15. and But the way they've done the progression through it is a bit interesting. And I don't know if I necessarily agree um, with the, the methodology behind it. I, You um, know, I kind of realized what was going on. I was like, man, I should be two right now. And I realized that there was a level boost, right? Yeah, yeah, but yeah. So I used, yeah, I used the XP boost. And that's how I got so high. Now... The, so there's XP boost and there's level boost. Now the level boost and XP boost are not based on, from my understanding, and you can correct me on this, but it's not based on uh, monetize. It's not monetized, right? It's based um, on how many games you've played and skills. You know, because those the the what is it called? The money in the game. Credits. I the credits. I think the credits is a premium currency. Oh. Right. So. You start with 3,000 credits just by default. But I think well, credits can be a premium well, hold up, hold up, hold up, hold up, hold up, hold up. The guy was saying, <laughs> I'm sorry, dude. Uh, but the guy was saying, because it's a, it's, a, it's a preview, that they were giving you money anyway yes. to test it out. Yes. So, um, let me ask you this before you move forward. I'm not, if you're, go if you're moving in this direction, just say that you're moving in that direction. But um, are the credits based on gameplay? Uh, it doesn't seem like that to me. Okay, go ahead. Mm. Um, so yeah, so we're looking at the credit system and whatnot, and I think you can buy like a daily skip, like 200 credits, which isn't a lot, because you get 3,000 in this flight. Um, but you can also buy consumable packs, like XP boosts and whatnot, which is cool, which is fine. Um, but I feel like the problem for me in particular, um, you only level up through that battle pass for doing challenges for like weekly and daily challenges huh? right which when i found out i'll be like okay but whatever but i'm at a point now where i've already done all my challenges and it didn't take that long but, you know it wasn't so is my now battle pass if this system right. is invented to the full game you know what i mean am i then capped out at a certain point and i can no longer make progress because you don't get xp per game um and i did realize there's no um, player rank, you know, there's no like player level, like you know, one to a hundred or whatever, which I, which I guess makes sense because you're not, if you're supporting this game for, you know, numerous years, you know, ten years or whatever, <laughs> you know, having level ranks, I can, you know, I can forgive that. That's fine. Yeah. But I feel like if I'm playing a game and I'm not actually making progress, it's like, why am I playing? <laughs> like, yeah. Yeah. You know, I mean, I'm, I'm a bit like skeptical on that at the minute. I, I, I wonder, like, what's your thoughts on that? Um, I found it kind of weird. I it the the challenges remind me of Rogue Company, where you will get um, credits towards getting your new character, whatever character mm -hmm. you're trying to get. You have to have done challenges that that goes into a pot. 
that equates to the amount that you want to uh, you want to apply, right? Um, yeah. So if if uh, Dio Zales was like a tank and he's worth ten thousand credits, right? And I only have two hundred. I have to do so much challenges to get these credits. Right, and then put ten thousand on, you know, the tank that is. Yeah, there. it's a real company system, which is ridiculous. <laughs> it takes I so mean, long. <laughs> I mean, it's a great game, but that, yeah, that those challenges, yeah. to, you know, yeah, it's it's a lot. Um, and then on like again, me, I'm over here. I'm thinking, the level up, the leveling part of it was like, oh, well, I've been playing forever. I haven't touched a battle pass. There's level up. Let me go ahead and level up. So I leveled up to two. And then I saw another one. Oh yeah, I can level up to three. Boom. And then four, boom. I got up to level 13. You know what I'm saying? And I'm like, okay. You know, I, I realized it after when I hit level five. I was like, okay. I, I know I don't have all this much experience because you know, Don CJG has been doing this longer than me. And I came to realize that I'm spending um, the in-game currency um, in leveling on the, in a battle pass. Yeah. yeah. And I was, I, I didn't, I, I felt that was kind of um, flaky, if you will. I, I don't know the best way of saying it. Because if anyone did it right, um, it would have been... You know, you ha I don't know if you play this, but it would have been um, Blessed Unleash, right? In my opinion, if, if it was to be ranked properly, in my opinion, then mm -hmm. when you've done something specific and you've accomplished it, it would automatically put you there. And then you automatically get the reward and then you can just put it on. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like you don't have to go to the battle pass and then do and then manually select the box and do this stuff, you know, um, but um, and I, I mean I could be wrong, but I just think like the leveling process. There should be a leveling process to show how long you've played. And, yeah. And, and and stuff like that. That, that mm -hmm, would make for sense sure. Uh, yeah, I, I, I'm in a bit of a position because I feel like you know through that multiplayer Vidoc they put out, they kind of talked about the battle pass. They kind of used the phrase of um, you can kind of catch up on all the seasons. You know, yeah. just selecting it, which is fine. But I feel like if you're then capping the XP count, if I can get per day or per week, it's like, well, how am I necessarily gonna catch up if I can't actually level up through playing? Because I've got to do certain challenges um, and I feel the challenges. I gotta wait till next week or the next day to then make a bit more incremental progress. So you let's know, speculate I, for a quick second. Then, is it possible that the seasons would always be available? Yes. Yeah, the seasons are always gonna be available. Yeah, they already said that. So, yeah. so when you're, so if you're working on one season, let's say season one, but we're in season two, right? Um, yeah. You'll be having too much challenges to do because you're working on two seasons. Well, I think no, I think you you select the season you want to do. So yeah. if we're on season two, and I'm, I say I haven't finished season one, I'll select season one. Mm -hmm. Right, so in all the challenges I complete, all the XP will go towards season one. Yeah, but it won't go towards season two. So, but yeah, I think they need to implement some kind of post-game XP system where right. just by playing, yeah, you, you're awarded for it. Yeah. Maybe this is a thing what's not in the game. It's a flight. Yeah, maybe, but I feel like as it stands right now, that's kind of to me a point of concern where it's like you're not really rewarded well, for the time you're playing and in. we are playing against bots so we there might yeah. not be uh, much uh reward for fighting bots that because mm -hmm. it could be considered yeah well like yeah a that's it as well you're right it could just because we're fighting bots too you know like a but, training session but, um yeah i'll say that let me follow up the tweet here yeah jerry hook who is one of the guys on the live stream um he said challenge of completion is that it is needed to progress so yeah, he, from 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 what his statement says, there it seems like there isn't an XP level system in place, mm. which to me, I feel like it's not. So it's not because free. the game is free to play, we're playing a free to play game. Mm -hmm. I personally, I think they should be able to to um, to add that in if the if the community yeah. is um, is crying loud enough. 
that's something that they could um, implement in because mm-hmm. and correct me if I'm wrong Dio but if you if you create a free to game free to play game you're not gonna lock things down like bake things in you're gonna have like procedural systems in place to to change when if the tide has changed as well right well you are gonna gatekeep to an extent right because you want them to spend money yeah right so them doing that with the challenges makes sense but there yes. i think there should still be experience like how don's saying from winning a match and mm-hmm. even for kills because i mean you look at like what their biggest competitor is going to be fortnite that's how it works in fortnite yeah if even if you lose the match you get experience you know for sure man so. yeah because i feel like you know if you're putting the time playing the game and you're not even rewarded for it yeah you've done all your challenges i feel like then it's kind of like yeah don't play our game until next week <laughs> you know what i'm saying it's, yeah that's the kind of vibe i get from it yeah, which I don't is... wrong. I'll still, I'll still play anyway, but mm-hmm. uh, you know, I feel like it's not the most user friendly approach to it. Yeah, it's not because I mean, now with today's like gamers, will get bored pretty easily, right? Like if they feel like they're not making that progression, they're mm-hmm. gonna just wander off to something else. Mm. Yeah. yeah, I mean, I, you know, I look at Mass Chief Collection and it does something similar, I guess. Um, you know, because the only thing you get through seasons. You know, you only progress through that battle pass through doing your challenges, per se. But at least, um, you know, I don't know, it just feels better. <laughs> just, uh, you know what I mean? Um, so unless, unless, I don't know. I, don't I know. guess that works better because you're not paying for that battle pass. So you're imagining mm-hmm. if yeah. I bought this battle pass and I'm gated this way, that's why it feels worse. You know what I mean? Yeah. Because you want to yeah. make that progression consistently. For sure. Especially because there is an XP level system. At least, I guess, yeah, I think it all ties back to that 10 year thing, right? You could, if you've got an XP level system of just, I don't know, level 1 to 100, let's say, yeah, would you just keep adding more levels every season or something? <laughs> you know what I mean? I don't know. But And I don't think there's even anything wrong with that. I think that's fine too. Because, mm. I mean, it's not like it's going to be like player power, right? Like it's just yeah, no. a status yeah. thing at that point. Yeah, for sure. For sure. And I mean, I mean, that, even that might be a better reason to maybe add it then. I mean, mm. that rank in of itself could be in a different location than the actual battle pass um, yeah. number. You know what I'm saying? Like, your battle pass number is this, but your your um, your, player count. your multiplayer count or level is this. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah, because people will be looking at your stats to see if you're even worth you know being in their in their in their group, right? I mean, your battle pass means nothing if you're boosting yeah yeah you know what i'm saying so there has to be something to to show how valid you are outside of the battle pass that's my opinion though oh yeah well, definitely. hopefully they can work that out because yeah i i did i did respond to that tweet and i was just like hey look <laughs> i put my feelings out there but um, like you guys said also right like these matches so far are only against bots right yeah so i would hope that that I think that's something that's a valid thing to say too is that because smite is kind of like in the same grounds right like when it comes to this kind of stuff with battle passes and free to play if you play against bots and smite you still get rewarded for winning and killing stuff you just don't get as much as if it was pvp so even then i think maybe they should reward people for fighting bots because there's going to be some people who do want to play it but they don't want to always fight other players because you know pvp is not their yeah. thing yeah just get a lesser amount or something yeah yeah that's it man just, I, I feel like you should still be making progress regardless what yeah. you play you know what i mean i think tying people back and just capping it off yeah is maybe not the best way to go about it and i mean you have nothing but to gain from that anyway because i mean Mm. you get people on that cycle where they feel like that's the thing is like you want to make people feel like they want to waste time playing your game as opposed to feel like you're wasting their time yeah. you know so if they feel like it's worth playing then they're just gonna keep paying you money anyway regardless i mean look at fortnite people don't just buy battle passes they buy all kinds of nonsense on it mm-hmm. between costumes and emotes and even like oh yeah like, yeah like the in game store there's a lot of cool stuff in there you know what i mean yeah. a lot of cool um, pieces of armor and um some coins and whatnot and you know and there's you know you got the hcs which is going to support all the uh, mog teams which i like but yeah it's just that that battle progression at the minute what has me a bit 
not too. <laughs> now, now I'm upset about it, but I feel like uh, I feel like the improvement. Gotcha. Mm -hmm. Cause I would imagine three thousand points is like pretty much like I guess like thirty dollars. Maybe that's kind of that's kind of like the rough equation, like when it comes to most of these free to play games. Yeah, possibly. So, like, how much is it to like skip a level? Uh, two hundred at a minute. So that's about like two bucks. That sounds about right. That sounds about like what you see yeah. in a lot of other games. Yeah. All right. Well, guys, this is the uh, the show. This is the Disciple Podcast. The Digital Disciple Podcast. Disciple. Digital Disciple. Podcast. <laughs> <laughs> um, Rebranding? About... <laughs> nah, bro. Um, talking about a lot of stuff. Um, not much this week, but you know. Um, we did have some gameplay for the Halo Infinite and the Ascent, which you know I'll definitely be jumping into. Um, we did talk about the PS5 storage um, situation. Uh, if you're not comfortable, definitely check out those YouTube. If you, if that PDF does not make sense to you, you know, reach out to your to your community and let them know. You know, you deserve to uh, to have that extra storage. So, um, oh yeah, definitely. So until then, this is the Digital Cycle Podcast meeting every every Saturday at 10 a.m. You know, like and subscribe if you enjoy the show. Um, give us some your opinions so we can all get better. But um, until then, you guys have a great weekend. Peace. Thanks, guys. <laughs>